big chicken dinner. Those are the words that members of the United States military have for many years used to refer to the bad conduct discharge. And those are the words that were resonating through my head um, at the end of last June when I first heard the uh, Sir Patrick Sanders, General Sanders, uh, perhaps formerly Colonel Sanders, talking about a land war. You heard it right. A land war that the United Kingdom is going to wage against Russia. Let me say that a third time. A land war against Russia. General Napoleon? Uh, the Fuhrer, are you listening? Are you listening? How many empires have ground themselves to powder trying to wage a land war against Russia? What kind of mind, what kind of crazy reprobate mind would think that the correct move is to wage a land war against Russia? Crazy Anglo-Saxon bastards. Call a cab. Crazy Anglo-Saxon bastards. General Sanders, you should have not quit your day job as Colonel Sanders. Now we're going to have what my friend Rick Ellis, may he rest in peace, used to call Kentucky Fried Chicken in reverse. And it's in the Bible. Not in any other book. The Bible. The Bible. Specifically, Revelation chapter 19, where the big chicken dinner, to end all big chicken dinners, is described. Now, I'm asking you to lay aside whatever apocalyptic um, eschatological interpretations you may subscribe to, for the moment, for the sake of argument, and to entertain the idea that sometimes without claiming that there's a literal, a literal fulfillment of prophecy, sometimes if the prophetic shoe fits, you can just wear it. Because sometimes within the book of Revelation, what is being communicated is the attitude of the Holy Spirit and of God, the triune God himself, the creator of all things against wickedness and rebellion, which is a universal attitude. So laying aside the literal fulfillment of this prophecy in Revelation 19, let's just see what God is describing about himself and his attitude to reprobate empires that forget him, that apostatize, that no longer make a good faith effort to enforce any version of his law. In other words, what does the Lord do with the bathwater when there's no longer any, when they've killed the baby? When they killed the baby, the United States, the United Kingdom, has made themselves the bathwater. And there's no need to worry about the baby because they killed the baby. That is the, the Christian tradition, British common law, within America and within the entire West, has been utterly excised, cut out, repudiated, and in its place, the mind of Sodom and Gomorrah, the mind of the reprobate Jews of AD 70, a rebellious, angry, willful mind with a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, setting themselves up like the Jews in AD 70 for complete destruction. The cab is the crazy Anglo-Saxon bastards, cab. But the angel, according to Revelation 19, is going to call foul. F-O-W-L. Revelation 19, verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, 
and of them that sit on them. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, small and great. That's the end of verse 18. So, that's what my dear friend, may he rest in peace, Brother Rick Ellis used to call KFC in reverse. KFC in reverse. Kentucky Fried Chicken in reverse. Imagine a big bucket, a big, uh, uh, what is it, a 21-piece a, a bucket of KFC. Except the people doing the eating are the birds, and the people being eaten are the people. Think about that. The fowls of the air are a mighty people. They eat the flesh of kings, and they do not discriminate between a poor man and a rich man, a black man and a white man, a Jew or a Gentile. They're hungry. They're crying out to their maker, and he has prepared a feast for them. Colonel Sanders, oh, sorry, I mean General Patrick Sanders, the uh, ch chief of staff of the British military forces who wishes to wage a ground war against Russia. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry for, for demoting you to Colonel General Sanders. You shouldn't have quit your day job. Go back to KFC, you stupid son of a bitch. But you won't, because a reprobate mind has enveloped the entire Western world, and they will not have peace. Russia and Ukraine were in Istanbul in March, ready to sign a peace accord. Boris Johnson said, what? Peace? Well, we can't have that. No, no, no. No peace. They won't have it. Folks, the days of Ronald Reagan are gone. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, our former uh, Treasury Secretary in the United States, Assistant Treasury Secretary, uh, describes when he was a member of the delegation designed to communicate with the USSR, the Soviets. And Reagan told every member of that delegation, according to Dr. Roberts, that if anyone was condescending or arrogant toward any member of the Soviet delegation, that person would be fired immediately. But now we have presidents and prime ministers and people openly, cabinet members and ministers openly threatening ground wars, threatening assassinations. The provocation is indicative of a reality in which the Lord God Almighty has had enough and is withdrawing his grace to allow them to make their own bed of misery and sleep in it. So, General Sanders is calling the cab, the crazy Anglo-Saxon bastards, and the angel, the angel of God, is calling foul. He's calling foul. He's calling foul. F. O W L. He wants to go the way of Napoleon. They want to go the way of Hitler. But it's going to be bigger this time. This time the whole world is Jerusalem, leading up to AD 70. If you don't know about AD 70, I'm not saying AD 70, AD, Anno Domini 70. The year in which the words of Jesus Christ saying, This generation shall not pass away were fulfilled, and the Christians fled to the hills. But many Jews, you can read about it, eyewitness account of Josephus. It's on Audible. It's in every library, or it should be in every library in the Western world. The Jewish War by Flavius Josephus. If you'd like to hear a first-hand account, let me just give you a little snippet, all right, that characterizes the whole siege, ending in the burning of the temple. People were disemboweled, thousands of people, people starved, and the rebellious Jews ate their own children, even more than they had during the Babylonian captivity recorded in Isaiah. 
They devoured, cooked, and ate their own children because they crucified the Messiah. And when Peter preached to them the message of repentance, thousands repented and became Christians and became Christians. But the dregs and the majority rejected the testimony of the apostles, conspired to slay them as they had slain their master. For as Jesus said, no servant is greater than his master. And they were slaughtered as the Lord Jesus Christ had predicted as the greatest prophet to their faces in his parable of the wicked husbandmen, the wicked vine dressers. And it came out of their own mouths, even as Pharaoh spoke his own judgment out of his own mouth through his decree that the little babies and the firstborn sons, the baby boys of the Hebrews should be killed. Even so, even so, when Jesus spoke, look it up, the parable of the wicked husbandman. He ended with a rhetorical question, which the Jews and the Jewish leaders answered. He said, what will the Lord of that vineyard, the owner of that vineyard, do to those wicked husbandmen who killed his servants, who killed his servants, the prophets, and who killed his son and sought to steal the inheritance? Well, they said he will utterly annihilate them and destroy them and take away, take away everything they have and give it to another people. And Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven would be taken from them and given to a nation bearing the fruits thereof. Those people who are circumcised in their hearts, who follow the Lord, the Lord's remnant, they know who they are, the true Israel of God, not the fake, abominable nation state falsely claiming the name Israel, but the true, holy, sacred, obedient Israel of God. Not the baby-killing, fag-enabling sodomites who run Tel Aviv. Now, we have a Jew, Zelensky, just like the zealots in the Jewish rebellion against the Romans. Again, read it. Flavius Josephus, The Jewish War. Don't take my word for it. Hear an eyewitness. They were stubborn. They would not stop. They could have resolved the conflict before it started. And at any point over the years of the siege, they could have had very reasonable terms of surrender from the Romans. And yet they provoked. They provoked until the Romans, humiliated, had to go back to the Senate, raise new armies, strengthen their armies, finally sacking Jerusalem, laying siege to Masada, where the last Jewish warriors slit their throats after slitting the throats of their wives and their children. Now, earth dwellers, the whole world has become Jerusalem. And it would seem that Zelensky, the Jew Zelensky, wants to make Ukraine into Masada where the provocations will never cease because in his mind he is determined because in his reprobate mind he is determined and has determined that this must end in destruction. Because in his reprobate mind he is determined that he prefers utter destruction for the world and for Ukraine rather than peace. So, the world has become Jerusalem uh, before 70 AD. So, the world has become Jerusalem in the year of our Lord, 70. And Ukraine has become Masada. What will happen to the wicked abomination that should not exist that standeth where it ought not, called the secular state of Israel, the blaspheming, sodomite-enabling, baby-murdering state of Israel, 
shoots the kneecaps off of uh, little Palestinian boys after robbing them of their heritage and their lands. Only God knows. Repentance. I'm talking now to you, remnant. Repentance is in order. Seek the Lord while he may be found. The big chicken dinner is coming. Don't follow General Sanders. Don't follow Colonel Sanders into the big chicken dinner. Don't follow the cab, the crazy Anglo-Saxon bastards into the big chicken dinner, into the 21st century Masada, into the 21st century AD 70 Jerusalem, flee for the hills and don't follow and turn your eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Make peace with him. His terms are very good. He's an avenging Messiah coming to lay siege to the whole earth and take back what is his for his people to give the earth and give the kingdom to the meek, to those who are submitted to him in their hearts. So submit now, submit now, submit now in your heart. Repent, believe, and be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost before it's too late.